Hey guys, Sam here. As some of you may know, RED just released their newest camera, the RED V-Raptor VV, which stands for Vista Vision. Uh, this is kind of a surprise release. I don't think a lot of people knew this was coming, so RED CEO and founder Jared Land has released a lot of new footage of a lot of RED advocates, uh, celebrities, and pioneers of the new RED technology receiving their, their new V-Raptors, including Zack Snyder and Jason Momoa, who has been seen capturing a lot of footage on RED cameras in the past. And the footage we're seeing is looking pretty good. I mean, there's not a lot to go on at this point. Uh, Jared dropped a, a video yesterday on his Instagram page that um, showed some interesting looking 8K 120 FPS footage out of the camera and there's maybe one or two other videos online. So we don't have a lot to go on at this point on the look of the camera, but there are some things to know about the new RED V-Raptor just right out of the gate. And that's what I'm going to be going over today. So obviously resolution is a big deal in the RED world. They've been pushing the envelope on resolution for many years and obviously they have another 8K sensor on the market in the V-Raptor. Raptor. And something important to note, this isn't just a new RED camera um, or an upgraded sensor. This is a brand new camera and sensor and it's the first in the lineup of the DSMC 3s and I think that could be a good thing for RED if they're working on the right things on improving their sensors so it should be interesting to see what they've come up with so this is a full frame camera and uh, there's two really good things about this the first thing is just I love the full frame look you can get really shallow depth of field you can use a little, little bit longer lenses on your sensor and still get the same field of view which is great and the fact that this camera crops in as you move to lower resolutions as always is the case with RED it's nice to have that extra sensor set so if you're switching to lower resolutions to shoot in high frame rates, you're not getting such a massively cropped image. This camera can shoot 6K Super 35 up to 120 FPS and 200 FPS at widescreen. So instead of starting at a Super 35 sensor and cropping down, you're starting at a full frame and cropping down, which is nice. And that leads me into one of the biggest deals about this camera, which is the crazy frame rates, 8K 120 FPS all the way down to 2K 600 FPS. At this point, you're going to be so crazy cropped in on this sensor. I don't know that 600 FPS will be that usable, but it's crazy and it's the highest frame rate we've seen on a RED to date. So that's a really cool feature of this camera. But even cooler is the fact that it shoots 8K 120 FPS, which is awesome. The camera is advertised at 17 plus stops of dynamic range, which is once again the highest that we've seen on a RED to date. However, we'll see what the lab tests say because RED has been notorious as of late, advertising a higher dynamic range on their sensors than what you can actually use. For example, the Komodo is advertised at 16 plus stops a dynamic range but lab tests tended to reveal that it was somewhere closer to like 12 stops of actual usable dynamic range so we'll see what lab tests say about this camera but i'm looking forward to seeing what they have to say and it would be great if this camera actually has 17 plus stops of dynamic range i'll also point out that this camera does have a rolling shutter it doesn't have a global shutter like the komodo however apparently they've instituted some new technology into the sensor that reduces the amount of rolling shutter which is great um, so hopefully it won't be very noticeable. And unfortunately, once again, this camera doesn't have internal NDs, but uh, you can always get an RF to EF adapter and some of those have drop-in slots for filters. So you could always get your internal ND type filters that way. And it essentially accomplishes the same thing because you don't need a matte box. And as for form factor, as with pretty much all new RED cameras, it's excellent. Uh, it's very small. It comes in at about four pounds and it's about four and a quarter by four and a quarter by six inches. So it's extremely small considering what you're getting with this camera. It's also shaped essentially like a cube. So um, you're getting really good weight distribution. So it's easy to mount on gimbals and you can also build this camera out as much as you need to. So you can expand it to a bigger studio or production camera, or you can shrink it down to a, a very small camera package, which is excellent. As for power options, it's currently micro V mount and it doesn't seem to be detachable or replaceable so you'll have to use only approved micro V mount batteries uh, for the best results on this camera. Now it has two SDI outputs and they can be mirrored or individual. What that means is that you can have two output feeds for a direct monitor and a wireless monitoring system or two different wireless monitoring systems and that's going to be great for bigger productions and high-end sets where you need to have a couple different feeds. Now the media is currently going to be a bit of an issue for people I think. Uh, there's one approved card and it's a proprietary angel bird card and it costs like almost a thousand dollars so hopefully red will be coming out with some other approved media soon but at the moment there's only one card that's available so all in all if you're buying like all the proprietary stuff that you need to get started with this camera it's going to come in around thirty thousand dollars although the price tag on the body itself is only twenty four thousand so spec wise this camera is amazing the price tag isn't too bad uh considering what you're getting out of this camera but i do want to say a couple things about what i hope to get out of this sensor and what I hope Red has been working on. So let me just say, 
I don't really like the look coming out of the new red sensors. Now it does depend on who's using the camera and what look they're trying to get out of the sensor. A lot of the new Netflix movies, Netflix shows, and stuff that's coming out of uh, Zack Snyder, I don't love the look of it. I think it looks very digital. It doesn't look very filmic or cinematic in, in my opinion. It looks more digital to me. And personally, I don't find it very appealing to look at. Zack Snyder's new films like uh, Army of the Dead have not impressed me in terms of the look at all. I think they look really digital and lack any sort of organic quality, much like the subject matter and and the overused visual effects and the films themselves. There's often a lot of aliasing going on due to the massive resolutions. Uh, the way it renders motion doesn't look as filmic to me as some of their previous sensors. And in my opinion, it looks actually more digital than their old sensors. I'm also not a huge fan of the way the camera handles highlights and skin tones. I'd personally much prefer uh, Alexa footage or honestly even Blackmagic uh, Pocket 6K Pro footage in those respects if I'm being completely honest. I also actually really like old footage that I shot on my Red One or my Red Epic Mysterium X as compared to some of the new footage that are coming out of the, the big 8K Monstro and full format sensors that Red has put out lately. I think that back then they were trying to emulate the organic and soft nature of film, whereas now they're basically chasing specs and numbers and it's a bit of a different game and I think that the look of the sensor has suffered due to that. So the newest sensor that I shot on by Red was the Komodo sensor and I got a lot of great images out of it. Overall, I was very happy with it. The global shutter was great. Uh, I really liked using the camera, especially for the form factor, so I can't really complain about that sensor. I really liked how the images came out of it. What I think I really don't like is RED's full frame 8K cameras that they're coming out with. So I think that they may have gotten a little ahead of themselves chasing these specs, and I think that 8K is a little bit overkill personally. I personally think that they should go back to um, more taking a look at the image that the sensor is producing and not so much the specs. So I'm hoping that they took that approach into this new camera because it would be amazing to get the looks of you know the old red epic or the red one kind of brought into the newer age of technology and giving that extra dynamic range and extra resolution to it because i think that would really up red's game so i really do look forward to seeing what comes out of this camera and put in the hands of the right filmmakers and the right artists i think it's going to produce great images and great quality content and i think it's going to be a great tool for filmmakers as red has always been since it was created i don't want to sound overly critical and harsh towards the developers over at red because i think they are doing a great job and they're creating tools that are you know becoming more and more affordable and creating amazing looking images. So I do want to say that I am excited to use this camera and I want to see what it holds in the future. If you guys have any opinions on this camera or RED cameras in general, I'd love to hear them. So uh, make sure you leave those in the comments and let me know what you think. And as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content. Uh, I've left some links below in the description if you're interested in checking out some gear that I have that I find useful. They're affiliate links. So if you want to support the channel in that way, uh, I get a kickback from that. So I really appreciate Appreciate that and don't forget to check out my other videos as well I have a lot of videos on red and some other camera and gear reviews so check those out so I hope this video is helpful for you guys uh, thanks for watching and have a good one